What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Tanya Michelle and we are not all love, light, twin flames, and unicorns over here. So please keep that in mind. And welcome to the Aquarius new moon video. Sorry, I kind of forgot what we were doing in this video for a second. Welcome to the Aquarius new moon video. If you're new here, basically we go over what is happening astrologically for this Aquarius new moon, which is on February 11th, give or take a few, depending where you are in the world. For me, it is around like 11 p.m. at night. So yeah, and then we're gonna talk about what you could see happening in the world in general, what you, the themes that you could expect. And then towards the end, we're gonna briefly go over what you can expect for each sign. The rising sign will resonate most, but I do recommend that you watch the first part where we go over the general themes that you will see because it will make a lot more sense when you actually go and watch your rising sign and your sun and moon if you like to. So anyways, let go. Holy shit, I didn't get to add this in the video, but this is the Sabian symbol for this Aquarius new moon. And it's fucking beautiful and so interesting, so I wanted to add it. It says, a man having overcome his passions teaches deep wisdom in terms of his experience. And holy shit, does this align perfectly with the Venus-Jupiter conjunction I'm gonna talk about in this video. The key note is the constructive use to which difficult past experiences can be put as examples for those who are still striving to overcome their passions. So she goes on to say, every type of experience can be made to serve a spiritual purpose. Every man or woman, however humble his or her status, can be an example to younger people who are still struggling to overcome or control the compulsive drives of their emotional biological natures. Whoever has managed a difficult performance contributes to the collective wisdom of his community and of mankind. Every achievement is to be passed on to those who may be inspired by it to greater or more adequate efforts. So basically, at this cycle, we are given a never-to-be-forgotten hint. It is the responsibility of anyone who has taken one step ahead in his evolution to help others to take that step. This is true education. The key word is communicability. This just goes so fucking beautifully with the astrology happening on this new moon in Aquarius. I think that it's a beautiful reminder with all this Aquarian energy that we are human. We are here to learn. We are here to make mistakes. We are here to grow and learn lessons. And that by our own evolution, we somehow add to the collective or the whole. This new moon in Aquarius is literally going to bring out our differences. It's going to bring out where we are unique, where we may feel like we don't fit into the norm, where we are going against the grain and where we are unconventional and not like others and that's okay this is about embracing our differences and even learning to embrace our lessons because those lessons can actually help inspire others those lessons mean something and do have a spiritual purpose and in somehow some way contributes to the rest of humanity so by being ourselves we naturally contribute to the whole this is how we as humanity come together by relating to each other whatever struggle you're going through whatever challenge you're having someone out there has been through it. So I think finding some kind of wisdom or spiritual purpose or even beauty in anything that we are going through right now or around this Aquarius new moon or even in the years ahead of all of this Aquarian energy can really help us get through. It can really help us understand that we are one person in the whole and that even just one person can make a difference on a collective scale. For this new moon, I'm challenging you to find beauty in the weirdness, whether it's your weirdness or someone else's weirdness, and to also find a way to embrace race differences, whether they are yours or someone else's. And as much as you look at the differences, also look at what you relate with look at what you have in common. Comment down below if you'll accept this challenge and let me know how that goes for you. I promise you this can actually open doors where you didn't see them before. All right, let's get back into the video. All right, I am going to record my screen because I know a lot of you guys like when I do this and it really helps you out to understand what the fuck's going on. Um, so hopefully, as you can see here, if this works, because I've had a few mess ups with this before. So we have the new moon happening right here at 23 degrees Aquarius. Um, how do I know it's a new moon? Because the sun and the moon are, are together, which makes a new moon and they are in the sign of Aquarius, as you can see here um, with the symbol of Aquarius. We have Mercury close by as well, but not considered a conjunction because Mercury is at 16 degrees Aquarius. So yeah, we have a new moon in Aquarius. So what do new moons bring? New moons bring beginnings. They bring kind of like a refresh, a reset. It starts a month, new monthly lunar cycle. Um, and so we are going to be seeing a lot of Aquarian energy with this new moon. What does Aquarius rule, right? Aquarius is 
individual, but also collective. Aquarius, it deals with the ordinary person and the people and the power of the ordinary people on a grand scheme of things, right? Aquarius deals with like-minded people um, because like we talked about in the full moon that we had in the sign of uh, Leo uh, last month, uh, that basically Leo is where you find your passions, your joy, your interests, what, what really feeds your soul. And Aquarius is where you share that interest with the world, with other people, where you find like-minded people, where you learn that it's not all about you, but by doing you and by being you, the right people tend to gravitate towards you. So Aquarius deals with progression because it's also the sign right after Capricorn. Capricorn is where things are traditional. It's where we build the structures because it's cardinal earth. So it's the beginning of earth, right? It's the beginning of the material world. It is the beginning of anything that is physical and material. So because Capricorn is the roots and the foundation, Aquarius comes after Capricorn. And Aquarius is a mental air sign, but it's a fixed air sign, right? So Aquarius is what I kind of came to the conclusion, if you follow me on social media, I said this the other day, Aquarius is almost like the perception change from Capricorn. <laughs> um, it's like things may look like they're changing or things may appear like they're changing, but are they really changing because it's the same old structure, right? It's the same old foundation, but somehow we can progress it, yes, but it's still the same foundation, right? And so Aquarius, since it deals with the mind, there's not actually any physical elements that are actually transforming here or changing here because we're dealing with the mind. It's just, it's about perception, right? Um, and this is something that I kind of came to the other day thinking about it pretty deeply. Um, you know, the whole perception thing with Aquarius, but Aquarius also rules unconventionality, you know? And what's really interesting about this new moon is that, let me move this here, we have also Venus and Jupiter uh, conjunct in Aquarius as well that same day at 12 degrees. So this is going to be an interesting new moon, okay? We're gonna see those themes of weirdness, unconventionality, doing things that are outside of the box, quirky, unique. We're gonna see themes of possibly groups of like-minded people or even movements. We may see some things of progression. We may see some things of science, social media, right? Um, there could be some information coming out. There could be, you may have a perception shift yourself in a certain area of life, right? And the reason that I notice this is because me and my boyfriend were talking this weekend and we were talking about the difference between Capricorn and Aquarius. And basically, and by the way, if you watched my Life is Falling Apart video, it's the same boyfriend we got back together. If you don't follow me on my other social medias, then you probably wouldn't have known, but yeah. Anyway, so we were talking about Capricorn and Aquarius, and he was saying how he didn't think a lot of the things um, were going to change, even though, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like the excitement of change, but is really, it, are things really going to change with all this air energy, right? Especially fixed air, which is not moving, right? Um, and so we were talking about the move from Capricorn to Aquarius and, um, and all of that. So that's how we kind of got onto that perception shift taught like topic like it feels exciting it feels different or it feels like it's going somewhere but is it really you know um because we don't have the physical cardinal element to do something about it now we do have taurus but taurus is fixed as well you know we do have uranus and mars here in taurus but like i said taurus is also a fixed sign right so um how much of that is really also changing right and so this is what we're kind of looking at here. Um, both want some kind of, both want something, but they're both stuck in their ways. They're both just trying to keep the momentum going, right? So basically, that's kind of 
my new a new viewpoint that I've came across with Aquarius, but you could see those themes like the excitement of change or progression or something unconventional could be in the air, but is it really different? And this is what I want you to think about because I know for me with Capricorn, it started feeling very repetitive. It started feeling very heavy towards the end there, like doing the same shit every day and nothing's changing. And then once shit moved into Aquarius, it's like my perception shifted and then everything shifted and I started doing different things, but really what changed, you know what I mean? So that's something that you may see come up with this new moon. Now, also with Venus and Jupiter, and I predicted this on my social medias, which if you don't follow me, definitely go follow me because it's on and popping over there. Um, basically, I think we're going to see some growth or expansion with money this week. And I think this will definitely deal with the stimulus uh, package that is working on getting passed. I definitely think this could be a week where it gets passed or some kind of financial institution or financial gain or financial growth or financial expansion in some other way if it's not that. Because Venus, the planet of money and finance and beauty, relationships, etc., is conjunct the planet of Jupiter, opportunity and wisdom and a higher perspective. You know, they're both, they're two of the most benefic planets. So um, this could be a good week for some kind of opportunity. You know, if you've been trying to get a job, that this could be a, a week to try to do that or to get a good call back. This could be a week where money comes in or um, you get some kind of good news. This could be a week where you have a higher perspective on a situation or a relationship or your love life or a partner or something like that or even your uh, beauty standards. Um, and I definitely think we're possibly going to see the rise of uh, empowered women or even unconventional beauty or unconventional different themes with beauty and relationships and possibly even sex um, could be a theme that we're going to see this week. So this is the really awesome part about this Aquarius new moon and it's bringing in a lot of growing type of energy and a lot of perception shifting kind of energy, a lot of unique and unconventional outside of the norm kind of energy. But I think we're also going to see possibly some kind of news or some kind of new beginning happening with these Aquarian themes as well, which can be um, very group oriented, very movement oriented, somehow with the people or affecting the people, um, you know, some kind of massive new start here. Now, another really interesting thing is that this Aquarian moon is squaring over to uh, Mars here. So, um, we have Mars over here and Taurus. Now, it has passed the square technically, so it is a good five degrees off, so it's not a very tight square, but nonetheless, we will feel that buildup of Mars energy as the moon will square it before it comes into the conjunction with the sun. So, basically, there could be, we could see some protest, we could see some resistance, some rebellion against some kind of new ideology or new agenda or, um, something along those lines, you know, some kind of new progressive thing. There could definitely be some kind of challenge that comes here. There could also be some kind of challenge <clears throat> um, to the people or to possibly even some kind of leader with it squaring the sun here. Okay, now with Mercury retrograde as well, um, in Aquarius, like I said, we would possibly see some backtracking or um, some kind of retractment um, coming out, you know, going back and figuring something out, um, something along those lines. But there's definitely some possibly new scientific evidence or new scientific outlook or something to do with tech or social media or unconventionality of progression that is starting here. And so because this week we have all of these planets in Aquarius, you know, um, like literally we have all of these planets in Aquarius, in the sign of Aquarius. So um, if you're wondering exactly what Aquarius energy is, because I do find Aquarius a little bit harder to describe than the other signs, uh, this this week is really going to show you what Aquarius is. And um, yeah, so 
that is what we have going on for this new moon. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you see any of the themes that I mentioned down below. And we are going to get into the zodiac signs. Alrighty, so starting with the sign of Aquarius, obviously, since this is your new moon. So everything is happening in your sign this week. So um, it is going to be a lot about you. You're going to start feeling this new moon's energy in regards to your parent, your appearance, who you are, your social mask, you know, how you interact socially with other people, possibly your early childhood, your body, your health, your, your appearance, and how you take care of yourself and who you are as a person. Um, you know, this is major self-reflection and a major new beginning of the self. Now you could find that there is some challenge though there when it comes to the past or the family or your roots or where you come from. Are you being true to who you are? Um, it is kind of a week for this, but it is a massive new beginning or a massive new reset, whatever you want to call it, in regards to who you are and the self. So also Aquarius, this is also very much about are you allowing your differences and your uniqueness to come out? This week may be a very important week for you to let your differences shine, even if other people don't approve or don't like it, to let your unconventionality come out, to push the bounds, to allow yourself to embrace your differences and embrace who you are authentically um, and you know, not care so much about what others think. So you're really gonna be feeling that energy. Let me know if that ends up resonating down below. Okay, so moving on to Pisces. So for Pisces, Aquarius is your 12th house. So you are gonna be really feeling this energy in regards to what's going on behind the scenes, where you feel you need to get away from the rest of the world or society in general or your everyday responsibilities. Um, you may really be reflecting on subconscious habits or healing work that you need to do that is affecting your day-to-day -day routines and day-to-day -day life. Um, you may also find that there is stuff coming back from the past, um, but this is really gonna allow you to have some kind of new wisdom or new higher outlook on your past or your subconscious conscious or things that you've been avoiding or habits that you have, okay? Um, this is some kind of new beginning or possibly even some kind of new wake-up call or downloads that you may be getting um, or even it could come in your dreams as well. So um, pay attention to those themes this week because those are going to be very, very important for you. Now, it is squaring Mars in your third house sector partially, so um, leading up to that new moon, you may be feeling some tension in regards to uh, speaking up or expressing yourself or community or, um, you know, challenges in your environment or with uh, some kind of something that you're doing or something that you're learning. Um, so, or possibly siblings, neighbors, etc. cetera. Um, so there could be something kind of uh, frustrating that you have to work through there. Um, but other than that, um, I think uh, this is gonna be a time to rest, to kind of go within. Um, and so, yeah, let me know if you see those themes down below. So Aries, uh, for Aries, this is, this new moon is happening in your 11th house sector if you're in Aries rising. So you're gonna see a lot coming up about your friends, your social life, your friend groups, social norms. Also any groups that you're a part of, you know, uh, you could be some, You there could be people from high school or certain people from certain high school cliques popping up in your life for some reason. Um, there could also be um, something going on with a friend or you could be focusing on your ambitions and what you wanna be out in the world, your place in the world. So this is kind of like a major reset with that, but it is gonna be partially squaring Mars leading up to the new moon which is your second house in your second house sector. So there could be something going on here with uh, your own value towards yourself or other people, um, what you find important, what you feel is important. Also your your finances, your money, your resources, your, your self-confidence. So um, somehow these themes are aligned. I think you're really being tested to really check in with yourself and feel if feel um, kind of see if you are really being your true authentic self out in the world and when you're dealing with other people um where are you where can you embrace your differences your uniqueness your unconventionality and all of that are you going against your own morals or values in some way so that is what i'm seeing for aries let me know if you see any of those themes down below so taurus uh, aquarius for you this new moon for you is happening in your 10th house sector so 
you are starting some kind of major new beginning with career, with your path, with where you're going in life, with your achievements, what you want to leave behind, your legacy, um, you know, basically your, uh, your, your, the world in general and how your relationship with the outside world in general, with the public, etc. Um, so this could really be um, kind of similar to Aries in a way where it's like, where do you fit in in the world? Where's your place in the world? Um, are you being yourself and are you sticking to your own, you know, unconventional, like unique differences in values? Um, are you um, being unique or are you just trying to fit in, you know? Also, this could be something dealing with authority figures. This could be some new beginning in career like progressing um, your career or progressing, like even if you work for like an organization or company, maybe that could be progressing. Um, maybe you're wanting to help people or get in contact with people that can help you um, in some way with your career. But there's um, also with the Venus and Jupiter conjunction, there may be some major new insight coming here um, and a higher perspective, um, you know, like a, or a perception shift when it comes to your career. But building up to the new moon, you, it will be squaring Mars in your sign. So there may be some tension there. There may um, be some challenge there at first or some issues that you have, or maybe uh, like maybe you're questioning if you're being yourself or if you're being authentic. Somehow it relates to yourself. And if you are in or doing um, something or in a career that is authentic to you and that values you as a person. So that is what I'm getting you for Taurus. Let me know if you see those themes below. Moving on to Gemini. So for Gemini, uh, this new moon is happening in your ninth house sector um, of your belief systems, your worldviews, your higher education, um, you know, how you like basically your perspective on life and, um, you know, your political views, your religious views, um, you know, any belief systems that you hold um, really kind of deal with this area of life. So basically you could be having some kind of major new perception change um, or even perspective change, you know, your perspective of the world or reality or the meaning of life or um, humanity itself could be shifting a lot um, right now. And so with the Venus and Jupiter conjunction, um, happening in your ninth house, this could also be giving you a whole new different kind of wisdom or higher perspective on things this week. Now, Mars will be squaring this new moon um, at first, so you may find that there's some kind of tension or some, you know, repressed issues that need to be looked at or something happening behind the scenes uh, that needs to be looked at or something from the past. But all in all, this new moon is really um, starting some kind of new beginning. Maybe you decide that you want to go back to school or that you want to expand your education or your experience or your knowledge in some way. Or maybe there's a, a new perspective on a situation that you've been looking at. Maybe there is um, a new realization that you have about certain belief systems that you carry. So let me know how that ends up working out down below. All right, so for Cancer, this new moon is happening in your eighth house sector. So this is definitely bringing some kind of new beginning or some kind of spotlight to certain fears that you may have or certain traumas or crises that need to be handled. This could also be bringing a solution to some kind of issue. Um, that's going on, especially to do with finances or your partner's finances, any debt that you have, um, anything that's going on in the dark kind of thing or anything that needs to be settled um, for you to move on. This is some kind of new beginning. So this could be you paying something off or this could be some kind of money coming into you or you paying some kind of money. I feel like it's pretty fortunate though with the Venus and Jupiter conjunction. So this may be some kind of money coming in for, for you or a new perspective on a financial situation, um, something along those lines. But um, this could also expose something with this new moon here um, with your financial sector or with something that you've been kind of subconsciously uh, avoiding or not thinking about in some way. Um, so there could be some kind of, you know, deep stuff that comes up to be healed or looked at. Um, but those are the main themes that I'm seeing with you, Cancer. Let me know how that plays out down below. So for Leo, this new moon is happening in your opposite sign of Aquarius. So this is some kind of new beginning um, when it comes to other people in your life, whether it be relationships, partnerships, also how other people perceive you. Okay, so 
Um, this could be clients that you work with or um, people that um, basically anybody that you have some kind of connection with or commitment with in your life. Um, this is definitely a new beginning there. Um, <clears throat> You know, you could be, this could be someone noticing you this week or people noticing you for something this week with Venus and Jupiter coming into their conjunction in your seventh house. But this could be a really great time to mend something in a relationship, to uh, have some kind of new perspective on a relationship or situation, or even um, it could bring up stuff with sexuality as well. Um, <clears throat> or even beauty or how other people see you. And it's really also going to bring up if you're being authentic, if you feel like you can be true to yourself around other people, um, if you feel like you can express your unconventional methods or your un, um, unconventional or kind of outsider viewpoint around other people. I know this is really big for Leo Risings right now, especially um, feeling as though you are um, different or you have an outsider point of view and you're kind of caught between either following the crowd or sticking to your viewpoints and or just not talking about them. So that can bring up some tension here because you're afraid it's going to possibly hurt your reputation or your career or your achievements um, or you know you could also be dealing with authority figures or challenges from authority figures if so. Um, but all in all, it's a it's a new beginning. It's kind of like a reset um, or some kind of new start when it comes to the people in your life um, and the people that uh, you work with or the people the, the people that you're in relationships, the people that you have commitments with. Basically, how other people see you, you know. So. Um, that is basically what I'm getting for Leo. All right, Virgo, so this new moon is happening in a place for you that um, basically deals with your routines, your work, coworkers. It's basically the sixth house, also animals or pets. Um, basically, basically, it's your, your mundane day-to-day -day, uh, stuff that you have to do, your responsibilities, your health, your diet. Are you staying healthy? Are you, you know, getting your exercise in? Are you getting your responsibilities done? Where are your commitments at? So this is some kind of fresh new beginning in that area where your perception could change on these day-to-day -day life things, your schedules, all of that stuff. Um, what you're doing in work, some kind of new beginning in work. Now, Venus and Jupiter are coming into their conjunction here, which is really special and opportunistic. So there could be some kind of opportunity that comes in here, or you could be seeing things from a higher perspective in some way. There could be some kind of like beautiful wisdom that gets shared, or you could find the beauty in something uh, this week, or you could find some kind of creative, um, something creative about what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. You could add some kind of creativity, beauty, love, romance, um, or it could be monetary in some way in your day-to-day -day sector. So that's really interesting. But the new moon will get a square from Mars as it is building um, in your ninth house of you know where you find meaning purpose where you uh where your morals are your higher perspective on things also your belief systems um and what you value um so there could be some challenges there with with those themes versus your day-to-day -day work life um, that you may have to solve or overcome in some way so let me know how that ends up affecting you down below moving on to libra so for libras this new moon is happening in your sixth house sector uh or i'm sorry your fifth house sector of your joy your romance your pleasure um, where you find your joy, where you get, get a sense of purpose, what really lights your soul up, where you have fun, where you feel like a child again. It also deals with children and hobbies and interests and all of these types of things. Also romance and dating. This would be a really awesome new week, you know, if you're dating someone to do something fun with them or to lighten things up, to freshen things up. This is some kind of new beginning in that department. But with Mercury retrograde, um, you know, it, it's if you're trying to date someone new, I would wait till after the Mercury retrograde for that. Um, I mean, you could go for it and try it. It's not like, you know, it's not like it's gonna necessarily end. Um, sometimes that can happen, but um, it's not gonna be the same for everybody. But basically, maybe you're wanting to put yourself back out there online if you're single. If you're not single, this is a good week um, and a very opp opportunistic week for dating and sexuality and relationships. Um, and also um, possibly something 
good happening with your children or you know some kind of growth or expansion with your children um possibly you know this could be a week where maybe you're making a big purchase as well once again i'd be a little bit careful with that with the mercury retrograde make sure that you're looking into all the details and reading the fine lines um mars and the eighth though in your uh, financial sector and other people find uh, other people's finances sector is going to be squaring this new moon as it's forming so um there could be some challenges with finances business your partner's money or um money that you owe or money that's owed to you that's coming up around this time um that is getting shined a light on in some way but other than that this is a great week for a perception shift on what you love your hobbies your joy your interests what brings you back to you and your heart um, is really the focus of uh, this new moon for Libras. So moving on to Scorpio. So for Scorpio, this new moon is happening in your fourth house, which is all about home, family, your roots, your foundation, um, where you find that inner emotional strength in, in, in your foundation, where you feel secure and comfortable, familial bonds, um, you know, your home life, um, you know, buying and selling houses as well and, and all of that. So um, you could be, there's a lot of focus going on there for Scorpios and the home sector um, and the living arrangement sector. So that's what this new moon is bringing up. It could be bringing up a new beginning in the home and family sector. With Venus and Jupiter there, it looks like possibly some good news or some good um, expansion. You could be um, expanding uh, your home or expanding your family or um, maybe somehow um, redecorating or buying more furniture, buying uh, more things for your home in some way. Um, now there could be some challenges in relationships, agreements, contracts, and partnerships around this time with the Mars squaring the new moon as it's forming. So just kind of watch out for that. Um, but other than that, it looks like a really good week to, um, you know, do something in the home to relax, to get comfortable, Netflix and chill kind of thing, to do something fun and new in the home life or with the family. So that is what I'm getting for Scorpio. Let me know how that ends up playing out for you guys down below. As always, I would like to hear about it. Moving on to Sagittarius. So for Sagittarius, this new moon is happening uh, in your third house, which deals with your mind, your learning, your uh, communication, messages, meetings, your local environment, your neighborhood, um, also um, siblings and relatives and short travels. So these are the main things you're going to be seeing. Um, uh, you could be learning something new around this time or decide that you want to take some kind of new course or new study or learn some kind of new skill with the Venus Jupiter conjunction happening in your third house. This would be a great time to shift your perspective on something or shift your perception on something um, to see things from a higher point of view or to have some kind of important conversation or to apply for a job to have some kind of meeting or conversation you've been meaning to have. Um, you could be hearing from different people this week. It could be a busy week with the new moon. There's some kind of new beginning happening here with your learning um, or in your local environment. Some of you guys could be um, working on something to do with a job or writing or speaking or building a website or a blog or something like that, using social media for something, connecting with people. Um, for your job or doing something creative, um, working on some kind of hobby or something. It's a really good week for that. Now, there may be some challenges with your responsibilities, your day-to-day -day work, uh, coworkers, your day-to-day -day routines or health uh, could kind of bring on a little bit of tension there as the new moon's forming, but I think you will be able to work through it. So let me know how that ends up playing out down below for Sag. Last but not least, Capricorn. So for Capricorn, this new moon is happening in your second house sector of finances, resources, where, you know, the things that you really value or have possession of, the things that you own, where you make your money, um, you know, your assets um, in life. And so there's some kind of new beginning happening in, in this sector. Venus and Jupiter is conjunct here. So this is going to be very opportunistic for more resources or more money or a new stream of income or um, doing something with your money, possibly even a big purchase. Um, I would just be a little bit careful with Mercury retrograde with that. Make sure that you are reading the fine lines and the details and everything. Um, if you do decide to do that, this could be a great time for investing as well. Um, if you've already been investing and it's not 100% new. Um, yeah, you are 
there's some kind of perception shift or some kind of new beginning happening here with resources and finances, some kind of new start, um, and it looks pretty good. Um, and also, it could be something that, um, you know, there could be some challenges there, though, with, with the fifth house Mars um, in your house of children, fun, um, you know, also uh, romance and love and all of that. So there could be some challenges coming from that area of life in some way. Um, also, the fifth house rules like your interests and your passions. But overall, I think with that Venus and Jupiter conjunction, the two benefics joining, it kind of outrules that Mars square. So there's something that you're becoming really interested in or there's something that you're having some kind of wisdom or um, higher perspective of. It's kind of like a, a rebirth of like your self-confidence or um, what you have to offer, you know? So that is what I'm seeing for you, Capricorn. Let me know if that ends up resonating down below. As always, I'd love to hear your stories and, and everything in your feedback. So, um, but that is basically it for this Aquarius uh, new moon video. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys and let me know if it ends up resonating as always. And yeah, I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye.